How's it going, guys? Hope you're well, hope you're safe. Welcome back to The Rules of Thinking by Richard Templar. We're going to go over rule number five today. Um, how did we all feel about the rule number four yesterday? Make sure you shout out in the comments section or DM me, yeah? Uh, it's always good to get some feedback. So, rule number five today. It's called keep hold of your heartstrings. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is going to be a good rule for all of us. Um, right, let's see what Richard's got to say, shall we? Yeah? We'll dive straight into it today. So, if you're serious about resisting other people's manipulations and thinking for yourself, it helps to be alert to how they're trying to influence you. Yeah, if you can spot it, it's much easier to resist. So next time someone seeks to persuade, convince, cajole you round to their perspective, think about the strategies that they're using. Generally speaking, they'll use emotion rather than logic. Your job as a clear thinker is to resist. Yes. Yes, Richard. Yeah. React out of logic rather than emotion. Okay. So from the other person's perspective, empathy is a good starting point. If someone can convince you that you both feel the same way, it seems like a much shorter step to thinking the same way. So a natural persuader will try to convince you that you're both coming from the same point. They'll emphasise similarities in your situation or values. They'll tell you they know what it's like to have kids or work in an office or struggle to pay the rent or enjoy buying clothes or own a cat. The shared experience puts you both in the same place. So now they can metaphorically take you by the hand and lead you to the conclusion they've chosen. Listen to them, but don't let them lead you blindly. Question the route and the destination to be sure it's really where you want to go. That's true, you know. That makes sense. That makes sense. If it's somewhere where you do want to go yourself, yeah, if, if whatever they're trying to persuade you for, whatever type of thinking they're trying to persuade you for, if you're kind of leaning towards that naturally yourself as well, my hair's doing all sorts of stuff. Like, I ain't really put any gel in it today. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like... So, listen to them, but don't let them lead you blindly. That's the moral of the story here. Okay. Yeah, make your own choice. Make your own mind up for yourself. If they can get you emotionally engaged, they will. For one thing, emotion is a powerful force. So they'll want to get you angry about the injustice they're campaigning against or excited about the clothes they want to sell you or anxious at the idea of overstretching your budget. And for another thing, it's much harder for you to think rationally once you start to become emotional. Fact, 100%. I've learned this the hard way over the years. And that's why, uh, going back to the story from rule number four yesterday, when I came across certain information which triggered me, uh, for lack of a better word, it, it made me feel quite angry or annoyed or frustrated, etc. Um, I needed to take time to detach the emotions from that. Do you know what I mean? I needed to process the information and take the emotions away from it so it's just cold, pure, hard truth. Do you know what I mean? Just just look at it logically and um, more clear-mindedly. 100% I agree with that. And for another thing, it's much harder for you to think rationally once you start to become emotional. So the higher they crank up your emotions, the more you shut down your rational response to what they're saying. Aim to resist the emotional response so your thinking stays rational and measured. You'll be a much better judge of how valid their point is. Another favourite ploy is to use weighted words. This can be more insidious and subtle and tends to work at an unconscious level. We all do it. Yes, you too. <laughs> and it's wise to recognise it in yourself. There's more than one way to describe most things, and the adjectives you use can be powerful. Suppose you read two newspaper descriptions of the same politician. If the papers are from opposite ends of the political spectrum, they're inclined to use different words to depict them. 
One might describe them as brave, while the other says they're foolhardy. Both descriptions of the same thing, but they give a very different impression. Is the politician firm or hardline? Are they socially aware or woolly? These word choices can build up to create a persuasive picture that suits the person or newspaper in question. I'm always interested in how the media decide who to describe as terrorists, who are rebels, who are freedom fighters, who are resistance forces. Often the only difference between these terms is the way the person using them wants you to respond. So notice the word choices the other person is making and substitute your own neutral words in your head so you can think more clearly. Bear in mind that consciously or unconsciously, you employ these same techniques yourself when you want to persuade someone else. So not everyone who tries to convert you to their way of thinking is knowingly manipulating or tricking you. Whether you agree with them or not, they're entitled to hold their view and they're entitled to express it. And you are entitled to resist it or not, once you've thought it through rationally for yourself. And the moral of the story is, if you can spot it, it's much easier to resist. I like that one. I think that's some good advice. I think that was, yeah, some good advice there, Richard. Thanks, mate.